Kin, who will talk about something a little different for us, which we all are excited to learn, <laughs> graph on mean field <laughs> games. Thank you very much. Uh, should I um, uh, negotiate for my four minutes now or later? Now. <laughs> well, you can negotiate what you want. The question is how hungry people are. So you yeah, I know you're up against <laughs> mass hunger. I agree. Okay, so, um, so I'd like to uh, sincerely thank the organizers for the invitation to uh, to speak here, um, and I'd like to make clear right at the start that my uh, 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 that this is work with uh, uh, Renel Fogan Chundum. Chuang Gao, who is a research fellow here in the audience in the back row, uh, and uh, Minyi Huang. Okay, and this is our affiliations. There are our affiliations and uh, our uh, uh, grant agencies. Okay, so our program is uh, uh, first introduce large population systems and mean field game equilibria. Uh, networks uh, go past the networks and graphons. Uh, then present graphon mean field game systems and GMFG equilibria, uh, introduce the notion of critical nodes in uh, the case of a linear quadratic Gaussian uh, graphon mean field games, uh, then give an, a motivation for what I'm calling embedding, <clears throat> and then uh, time allowing, uh, discuss <clears throat> uh, some uh, research in progress, work in progress, uh, with some ideas for uh, embedded graphons. Okay, so uh, um, <clears throat> so the fundamentals of mean field game theory. On the next uh, uh, couple of slides. Um, so we're interested in uh, large populations of agents that are uh, con that control uh, their states through the stochastic differential equations for the evolution of their states, and in the <clears throat> Uh, the notation is that uh, an agent will be uh, denoted script uh, a sub i, where uh, the population n is, as I say, will be going to infinity, <clears throat> and the uh, states will be rn value. So, uh, so an agent i in a population n <clears throat> has a, a state evolution equation given by this stochastic differential equation, where uh, the, that its state evolves according to its control, but the drift term is uh, impacted by the states of the other agents in the system. And these are averaged and summed over the other agents in the system. So, and then we have a noise intensity term and here a, a brown in motion. So our notation is we have a complete uh, filtered probability space. So this is time. Size the population, <clears throat> and the uh, initial the that uh, the initial data will be the initial states of the system. That we have the standard Brownian motions uh, over the interval zero to t, <clears throat> with t is evolving, uh, and uh, the population size n. So that the initial states are independent, identically distributed L two, and independent of the family of independent Brownian motions. So wait, there is a symbol u appearing in your stochastic differential equation, and I don't the see sub u, sorry? the u sub i, and I don't see a u in your notation. Okay, what okay, is so u? u sub i <clears throat> is going to be the control, and there's going to be defined in, on later slides, thank you very much, as uh, functions of the observations which are permitted to the agent, which will vary depending on the, uh, on the problem definition. <clears throat> So uh, the, the, the cost of performance function for each for a generic agent <clears throat> using game theory notation will depend upon the ith agent's control and the controls of all the agents except the ith agent. Uh, and this will be within a standard uh, 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 stochastic control framework will be the uh, expectation of the integral of the average of uh, the costs here, again, which are which are um, averaged with respect to the influence of the other agents in the system. So notice this is UI, this is your control that will uh, influence this, uh, that will influence the positive cost here incurred by this influence from the other agents. <clears throat> now, the, um, the way that large populations are handled is through the mckeen vlasov equations. The idea <clears throat> is that, uh, <clears throat> that for, uh, if the agents are in that if you take a, a, a large population of agents 
that are applying the same control and are indistinguishable except for their Brownian paths, then, the, uh, then this uh, 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 behavior of the, uh, of the other uh, sample paths will then, uh, will then aggregate into a measure which will, which will govern uh, the evolution of the generic state. So we have here that the that the that now we're just looking at one agent, <coughs> which we've read as the generic agent in a population, <coughs> and it, then here when they're all applying the, the the same control over the sample paths, then what we're going to have here is that this that this the drift term will then be expressed as a limit when the measure exists. When the measure exists, the question of course is does this setup have a solution? So the conditions for uh, uh, McKean Vassell's equations is a part of the description, uh, uh, is, a, is a part of the problem formulation. <clears throat> so we can regard this as a, uh, as a uh, Markovian system where we've got the, uh, when there's a solution, where the, uh, <clears throat> where the measure of the population, where the measure mu describing the population state distribution will evolve according to a mckean vlasov equation. And an individual agent will evolve uh, with the population measure in the drift term and its own individual Brownian path. <clears throat> so the question, of course, is does such a solution exist? And the, the uh, standard conditions will be a Lipschitz continuity uh, of the function f, <clears throat> so uniformly in the controls, so standard, uh, standard conditions. So we have a similar representation. You see, previously we had this integration over the uh, <coughs> over the uh, uh, it, uh, costs of the other uh, that, that your your co individual costs were influenced by the behavior of the other agents. And we see that when there's an, an exchangeability of the other agents, we have the measure mu of the population, and you're con uh, influencing it with your control u. So the question always is: Does there exist? Does there exist? A, a, this stable measure for the population <clears throat> under the controls that are being used. So now the question is, the, uh, is of the information pattern that's used by the individual agents. So we have two completely different setups. Uh, one is the uh, one is uh, here we describe the uh, sigma field generated by the state uh, and initial condition of the ith agent. So this would be the, the individual agent's information pattern. It sees its trajectory. <clears throat> so we describe it as FIN adaptive controls. Adaptation mean, meaning measurable as time increases. <clears throat> so um, at plus, uh, uh, so this, the, the, the lo local control, meaning the ice individual control, uh, is, the, is going to be uh, controls adapted to this, inf this uh, 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 sample path, your own sample path, plus knowledge of system parameters. Now, of course, knowledge is not a mathematical hypothesis, so it means function of. <clears throat> and so the, your controls uh, here are permitted to be functions of the system parameters when, when one's solving an optimal control problem or the game theory problem. So now the information for mean field control systems <clears throat> in, um, in for when we're looking at control will be that the, that the information pattern for the single, by definition, controller will be the paths of all of the agents. So this is the, the, the a centralized control uh, uh, or, or <clears throat> an individual controller who is uh, permitted to observe uh, all paths of the agent. So uh, the, the fundamental notion of non-cooperative game equilibria is the following. <clears throat> so that, uh, as I'm sure most of you are aware, that uh, a family of controls, u alpha, adapted to uh, lock i, local information, generate an epsilon Nash equilibrium uh, with respect notice to the individual costs. If for all i, a unilateral control or utilizing the global information pattern satisfies uh, this property. <clears throat> so by definition, a unilateral move against a population of agents which, who are utilizing Nash strategy cannot yield a benefit of more than Cylon for the unilateral agent. Notice that this agent is unilateral, is permitted to use <coughs> the global information, whereas the individual agents here are, are, are the, uh, the, the, uh, <coughs> apart from the, uh, uh, from the unilateral agent, 
these guys are all, you see, the, that without the super zero, <coughs> you're restricted to the prescribed adaptive controls to your local information. Uh, the unilateral agent gets to use all the control. There are various ways of, of, uh, of specifying epsilon and Nash equilibria, but <coughs> this is fairly general. This is quite a general one, so we get quite a, a strong result. Now, so what, what do the superscript zero sorry? indicate? The, the super zero is simply, it, is, whoops, uh, that's going to be a typo here. Sorry, the, the zeros should be alphas. Thank you very much. Ah. So, so thank and you then, very much. That's a typo. Uh, rephrase, <laughs> what do the superscripts alpha mean? So th this distinguishes oh, these the family. Are local. Yes, ah. so, so this just distinguishes the family. All these guys are local. Thank you for catching the, the typo. So the only guy that's not local is the is the unilateral guy so everybody moves so, according to so their local information yes everybody else for here is using their individual information I, yep okay I see. okay uh, and uh, uh, so um now um that uh, uh game theorists tell us that the that nash equilibria um are very uh tricky things namely uh, uh very simple problems nash equilibria simply may not exist and uh, uh, on the other hand, when Nash equilibria do exist, there can be a multiplicity of them. And the question is which ones to choose uh, and to compare between them. So it's a very, so Nash equilibria is quite a, a slippery business. It, you'll be uh, happy to hear that under the conditions that we'll be uh, giving, we have the existence and uniqueness of our Nash equilibria. Okay. So, oh, by the way, when epsilon is equal to zero, we have a standard Nash equilibrium. And the zero should be read. Uh, 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 either the alphas are the zeros or the zeros are the alphas. That's not the, the, the point. <laughs> that it's the it, it's the unilateral move, which is the key issue here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if we go to the the Keen-Vassov representation of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the infinite population equations, and if it is the case uh, that there exists a uh, payoff function for each agent. So we're looking here at exchangeable agents. So this is a generic agent. <clears throat> then the generic agent will, will be solving a stochastic control problem. And this is the key move of mean field game theory as again, which distinguishes it from standard uh, classical game theory, if you wish. That <clears throat> by going to the infinite population uh, situation, if solutions exist, then an individual agent playing against the mass doesn't see other agents. It merely sees a population distribution. And so it's playing against a random environment, which will evolve, which will evolve uh, deterministically according to the, uh, uh, the uh, Fokker-Planck equation here. So, so I see a question's coming. <laughs> the, yes, the, the microphone's illuminated. <laughs> I am new to this. So why would this thing be even differentiable? Uh, so we haven't put any assumptions on here at all. This is, this is pre-mathematical uh, pre analysis. It says here formally. Uh, and so by formally, we're allowed to write down the limit equations, which reads, if an infinite population, it would satisfy. OK, so this is formally. Uh, uh, so the, uh, the, the key point here is that, uh, is that is that in contrast to the great difficulty of solving a finite population uh, 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 game problems, stochastic game problems, by going to the infinite population limit, you get a soluble problem because it turns into a stochastic control problem. This is the key move. The point is that in order to get this stochastic control problem, you need to solve for the population measure. And the population measure corresponds to the measure governing a generic agent, because we're only taking uh, exchangeable agents here, and that will evolve according to the Fokker-Planck equation. So uh, the heart of the matter is to, is to solve these two linked uh, partial differential equations. One, uh, each agent is contributing to the generation of a population measure, which then govern, which then regenerates it then governs its own behavior and it, it, it governs the problem which it is solving and this whole business must move forward uh, uh, over the window of time 
Now, the, what is the actual best response control? Well, it's, the, it's given by, as in the standard stochastic control uh, uh, way, by, in, by the infimization of U over a compact set, uh, where, where H here, uh, infimization of the Hamiltonian, where this is the Hamiltonian. So this is standard uh, optimal control theory, except for the fact that one's got here the mckeen vlasov uh, feature to the drift and the controls. <clears throat> and one's got here zero, uh, here we've got zero terminal conditions. So can I yes. formalize it a little bit more in sort yes. of yes. vaguer language just to see that I understand. So you have this, you have this control, which, which now is sort of a continuous function, which controls sort of all agents. And then no, I no, want- no, 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 this is the control. You see, this is an individual generic agents uh, uh, equation. You see, this is the, the, the oh, I see. one generic agent. It is controlling its equation, you see. It's, the masses only appear through the measure mu. And in fact, it's a specific point that the, the, the individual agent's control is the arc imp of the Hamiltonian. And that depends upon time, its state, its state only, and the measure governing the mass. Uh, and notice that the, the, that the genetic agent's control uh, uh, and the mass measure uh, goes into the evolution of its individual uh, 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 distribution. And there's the P here again, but of course, it, that, 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 that density uh, is the assumed to exist density of the measure of the mass population. So that's the, the, the golden circle, which has to be closed. Well, okay, right. So, so the measure mu describes the distribution of the controls of the population. Well, the states of the population. The sta so I really try to understand this word control. So, okay. so who has control? I'm only, I as an agent have control over myself, but- Yes, yeah, that's right. The, the individual agent, the individual agent, uh, uh, you see, here in the infinite population situation, the individual agent U will control its drift and it subject to its evolving state and the evolving state of the population. But that is also its distribution because of the hypothesis of the- But that's a little what I don't quite understand. So the way I imagine a continuum of agents is that each agent has a strategy. Right. I have a distribution of strategies over this continuum of agents. You can them and then I, as an individual agent, am supposed not to benefit by deviating from the distribution which is assigned to me. Th that's but, right. That's right. But, but, but now you say mu is not a distribution of, con of the of controls, control of, of but states. Of state. So think of it as, as I mean, think of it in financial terms, if we if we must. Uh, so it would be that that in, that each individual is playing in a market. Uh, the individual has its its uh, capital resources or whatever, um, or the funds that it can spare. Um, so then it's playing individually in the in in the market against the distribution of of the population. Everybody else in the same position. They're playing against the, the market, but they're also generating the market's distribution. Right. So therefore, actually, the distribution of the state is actually generated by the distribution of the strategy of the agents. Yes. Yes. In the end, I think I, I can say yes to that paraphrase without finding myself in a contradiction in three slides time. OK, so uh, uh, so the question is, so then we have this. Uh, 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 formal set of equations here. Notice that we have the, the evolution of the individual agent is as we've been saying here, that here we've got the, uh, now this is the, the, the equations are under the, what's called a best response control in game theory, not an optimal control. Although in this case, the trick is that it's been calculated by optimal stochastic control. Uh, uh, so uh, does this, okay, can, can this work? So subject to technical conditions, which are what? Uh, uh, so uh, the, the U is compact, literally it's about in its conditions on all of the functions, uh, 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 or this, R, this is R to, the, R to the N, in fact, in general, R to the M, uh, uh, the, the states, and the, if you look at the arguments of F, uh, uh, and the existence of unique continuous minimizer of the Hamiltonian, right? Uh, uh, which, uh, which, which, which is now the, the continuity there, uh, involves a, a, a Wasserstein uh, a, a criterion because you're working with respect to the, 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 the measures, then 
the McKean glass of McKean, uh, the mean field game equations have a unique solution with the Nash equilibrium generated by the best response control. <clears throat> and that's the key point, that there exists a unique solution. Um, now, the, the, the techniques used by uh, Minyi Huang, Roland Malame, and myself uh, in 2006, that these actually were a, a Barnard contraction argument. Uh, so, um, and, in, and this is why I'm summarizing the conditions we use, which were the compactness, Lipschitz boundedness, and uh, so on. Uh, the the uh, uh, simultaneous and independent discovery of this, uh, 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 of the mean field game equation theory uh, by Lazary and Lyon um, used a uh, Kakatani uh, fixed point theorem, but they don't get uniqueness. So then that be, that's almost a sub-discipline in the Paris school because there's something called the, the, the Lesri Lyon monotonicity conditions. And that's actually got a whole literature with it, which generates uh, a, a criteria for uniqueness. Sorry, just one quick question. So um, is a unique Nash equilibrium point the steady state solution for the Fokker Planck equation or not? Do we have steady state solutions? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, time here is finite. So there is a theory for steady state solutions in the, uh, we're sticking to finite time intervals here. Okay, so um, righty ho. And um, uh, also, but uh, with uh, Minyi and Roland, we also proved a uh, epsilon Nash result. Uh, and this, the, this is the justification for the application of the whole business. Because uh, you, you see here that the, that, um, that the, uh, uh, that this, this, what's happening here is that the agents are all using here zero really, really does mean the superscript zero really does mean solution to the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation, the solution to the, the whole, to the uh, MFG equations. Here, uh, um, all the agents are using the solution to the infinite population equation, but they're using them in the finite population setting. And that's why at, at uh, only uh, at worst the cost of epsilon, where epsilon where epsilon will go to zero as the population size goes to infinity. So this the implication of this is that you solve the equations at infinity, which is going to be uh, uh, these the, the the issue of solving these partial differential equations, or in a linear quadratic Gaussian case. Uh, 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 an array of, of uh, linear equations plus the Riccati equation, which is completely standard. Uh, uh, and then you apply in your finite network setting, finite population, excuse me, networks come in a bit later. In the finite population setting, you then apply the, uh, the uh, infinite population controls for a, a cost that you know, <clears throat> which here will be going down actually like one, one over root n basically. Um, uh, for a cost which you can estimate. The alternative would be to try to solve all of the, to, to solve for the Nash problem for the, for the finite population N, which could be quite large, knowing that even for quite medium numbers, it's an impossible task. Okay. So this is why, uh, this is actually the key reason that uh, mean field game theory has become so popular is that you can use it as a path around complexity uh, uh, by uh, the cost of solving the mean field game equations in an, an otherwise intractable, intractable situation. Okay. Uh, so the, okay, networks and graphons. Okay, now the, um, uh, the classical mean field game model, which you've just seen, uh, uh, I mean, there are thousands of papers on this, so this isn't even an, an indication of a survey uh, of the topic. This is just the elements. Uh, so the key variables are simply average. When it's a mass, they play a role in the behavior of a large population system. The only averages you've seen there are one over n sum, right? So, uh, which is really equivalent to a uniformity assumption, namely the, the individual agents are distributed of the nodes of a, a large scale network, completely connected, all edges have equal weight and so on. Okay, and the uniform, uh, uniformity assumption often doesn't hold, uh, may hold, uh, locally approximately, but not globally. So now we get to motivation slides. One is uh, uh, trans uh, 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 transportation clusters uh, uh, over the earth. Um, this is pre-COVID for sure, um, where you've got a density of, of flight paths over Europe, uh, uh, North America, 
and, uh, and Asia, uh, where you may have local denseness, but obviously you do not have global denseness, a, a, a fact which I think this audience will uh, appreciate. So that is at a planetary level. And here we have at the level of the United States, again, uh, it, it, you may have denseness locally uh, to a degree, uh, but globally you clearly do not. So this would be the invitation, and this is the invitation we thought to use graphon theory so that we could look at large complex networks which were not uniform, and so try to, uh, and so to uh, exploit and use the, the, the power of graphon theory. Now, this audience really doesn't need to see the iconic uh, uh, um, uh, evolution of the uniform attachment graph sequence, um, uh, or um, even to read the definition of a bounded symmetric Lebesgue measurable function, uh, uh, that a uh, graphon is a bounded symmetric Lebesgue measurable function on the unit square two, for instance, the unit interval, and its uh, interpretation. So, uh, and uh, again, you don't need to, uh, to really see a definition of the cut distance uh, or the definitions of the metric, except here, the tricky business, of course, of the infimization of all measure preserving bijections, which is something uh, later on that we don't want to do. So, uh, so uh, and then the key, uh, the key theorem, of course, being the, uh, uh, the, the compactness of the space of graphons uh, under the cut metric. Okay, now, uh, so, uh, what we, so now what we want to do is do, uh, do um, mean field games over complex networks, where complex here means non-uniform. Uh, so, so, uh, so we now work this up as you've seen before, but now with connections over networks as well. So here we have the collection of states of all agents um, in a bunch of clusters. So we've got these clusters of, of agents, which you can think, which uh, I invite you to think of as being at nodes in the network, uh, giving uh, a total population, uh, which will be the sum of the populations uh, at the uh, number of agents at the uh, individual um, uh, uh, nodes. Uh, if it was scalar, that would also be the, uh, the number of the individual states. Um, the agents in the cluster I uh, uh, then face uh, two coupling terms. Uh, uh, one will be the local coupling term F0, which is our uh, uh, standard mean field game uh, connections within your node. And then we have the connections over the network, which will be of the same sort. Notice you, it's your control interferes here. Uh, the other guy's controls influence their state evolution at their nodes. Whether the UI actually appears there is not, not actually significant. In some problems, it may be. And then what's going on at the, at the you see, the, this is the Jth, uh, this is the Jth agent in the Elf cluster. So they're averaging out over the population size, population size um, in the Elf cluster. Then that cluster influences the impact on the, this, uh, the global drift impact on the ith agent by then being averaged over the graph connections between the ELF cluster and the ith cluster that, that is the, in which the ith agent resides. And then this is all appropriately normalized. So, is your, so you have a network, but you also as input have sort of that clusters of agents, right? Yes, so clusters that is of agents at each. Of, at each of the nodes. We're going to populate so can I think node. of the cluster as a ball of radius R or is your cluster just, could my cluster contain some people in Russia? Uh, uh, so uh, I, I, it's, it's interesting that you should know, introduce the notion of distance and metric, of course, which doesn't exist here. Now I have so, a graph, so uh, I have a distance on the graph. So, um, so at this point, we're just using the standard indexing, and these will be disjoint. Anyway, to answer your question, that these will be disjoint populations at this di dis at the distinct clusters, disjoint populations. I still don't understand. Are your clusters? Is that another input of the system? So you have a graph, and you have a collection of clusters. The clusters will reside at the individual nodes in the network. And they will be the populations sitting at the separate nodes. So oh, the, I see. The, so okay. the agents 
J. I see. So I think of the nodes as containing many agents, yeah, each yeah, of them. Exactly. And the number of agents probably also goes to infinity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's right. Infinity is everywhere. Yes, that's right. So, um, so then, then uh, I maybe this answers your question more clearly that the evolution of the ith agent uh, will be given by its uh, a standard mean field, now familiar mean field evolution locally, plus the impact. Uh, weighted by the uh, 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 mitigated, weighted by the edge weights in the network, and then at each of the separate nodes, uh, uh, um, which will be like the elf, for instance, here the elf node, its local population will generate this drift influence, which will then be, and then I'm repeating myself, be averaged through the network, and then that impacts the the ith agent. Notice that this is all the drift term, and it's still only got its individual uh, uh, Brownian motion. Okay. Is that has that made it clear? Yeah. Okay. And so then we just then we pack that up into this uh, term into this notation here. Uh, 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 we do the analogous trick. Trick. Uh, the, the, make the analogous uh, uh, no, uh, 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 summation. Uh, where the actual costs, your costs locally at the, at the for the ith agent in its uh, cluster CI uh, is then this normalized weighted uh, 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 weighted uh, sum of the average costs uh, impacting you from the uh, uh, jth agent in the elf cluster, and then again you add that up to the standard mean field term, and then you get the expression here. Okay. So, uh, uh, so the, what we're going to assume is the number of nodes in the graph tends to infinity, assume a unique graph on limit. Uh, the subpopulations at each node will tend to infinity, given a local mean field at each node. Uh, and then the global set of mean fields is denoted mu capital G, okay? And we're denoting the, the, the graph on G alpha beta. Then we've got, uh, then this uh, repeats the uh, uh, terminology that we've just been established. So now what we have with this uh, expanded notation is that at the alpha, uh, the, uh, the alpha -th node uh, in uh, at the, uh, the that now the, the alpha, the alpha now generates an alpha -th node, and this will be a generic agent in the alpha node. And this is all of the mean fields, if they exist over the network, in, so this will be so for every element of the network. Uh, uh, so this is in the infinite case. I should always should emphasize that this is the, that here we've now passed to the infinite network, infinite population. So now I have an infinite population at each node in an infinite network. And so we're going to put, try and make the same maneuver. You see, this was the finite populations on a finite network. Then uh, uh, so once this notation is established. We then, as in the mean field situation, pass to not only infinite populations, but an infinite network. Okay, so uh, so you see what happens uh, here is that, is that, uh, that, so, uh, question. yes. So in the infinite system, what does a point represent? Does it represent in the pre-limit a whole bunch of particles that now became like one point in the infinite system? Because in the pre-limit, you had like individuals who somehow had their own clusters, which are then connected using. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the situation is that the only individual you can ever see is just one guy, let's say yourself. Yes. And then if you then what you see is that the individuals in your node, I mean, in the limit. Yes. The individuals in your node have just turned into, into a measure. It's just the population. Okay. And the network itself, which you could see as a bunch of edges before we went to the limit, yeah. which we're assuming here is dense, mm -hmm. that's turned into a dense uh, 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 graph on mm -hmm. dense network. And uh, 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 that at each of the points in it, right. on nodes, each of those and each of those resides again an infinite population. I see. So the in the graphon limit, the each point actually corresponds to a, a collection of individuals in the pre-limit. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, the, but we still retain the individuality of any of any agent that we land on. You see, this will we can still describe the the evolution of an individual. So this isn't 
uh, this is like you're really grabbing a single molecule in the statistical mechanics model. You're really looking at that, at that molecule as it's influenced by all of the mean field, all of the, of the rest of it. Here we've got two layers of infinity, local populations, infinite exterior populations, and the infinite network. So would there be like an infinite number of clusters and those are all Sorry? Would there be an infinite number of clusters Yes, yeah, yeah actually there's, there's, uncountable there's, infinite, yes, right? So right. there's an un, so there is sort of an uncountable infinite product of an of something which represents a distribution, the infinite distribution on the cluster. So it's sort of zero one to the r or something like that. Yes, which is your state space. Okay, again, again, I'm, I'm going to risk it. Get, yeah, I think I can definitely risk that. Yes, you've got a double infinity here for sure because you have the infinities at all of the points, namely the infinite populations, at all of the points in an infinite network. Is it obvious that all of this is well defined? I mean, you have an uncountable number of Brownian motions, right? The, the right. D, right. Well, W, we, we, T, yeah. alpha. <clears throat> is there some consistency between them or uh, well, just IID? Uh, the, 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 the paths are, nope. are independent, yeah, indeed. These are independent. For different I, alpha. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> At, indeed, firstly, at the other nodes, of course, you don't see any motions. I mean, all, all you've got is just the populations. Locally, you've got your, your, you've got your individual sample path contributing to your local mean field. But it's, I mean, it's, the, 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 this is a path governed by a measure at each node. So, um, uh, so, the, uh, so the question is, um, so now we go to the mean field game, the graph on mean field game equations. Uh, so now this is a, 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 essentially a copy almost of the mean field game equations, uh, except that now we've got, that now we have parameterized by, uh, by alpha, where alpha is ranging through the nodes of the network, okay, and at each node, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have an individual measure except that because of that focusing of influences from around the network, we actually have all of the measures at all of the, uh, uh, over all of the nodes appearing in your individual drift term here. Okay. Uh, and the G alpha actually is, is going to, is describes your fiber in the graphon. So these, this is the edges that, 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 that uh, impact on you. So um, now, so now what we have is uh, the, the Fokker that is the, uh, in, <clears throat> alpha indexed um, mean field uh, uh, Fokker Planck equation, the Hamilton Jacobi equation, uh, alpha indexed, <clears throat> and uh, the, the, uh, the, the best response is going to be, is going to turn out to be a function again only of, of your state only. This is very, this is crucial for the, for the actual interpretation of the results, but will depend upon all of the other measures and your, your, your local mean field if, if this scheme has a solution. Okay, so now we have the existence and uniqueness uh, result for this uh, 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 situation. Uh, so we have here, so, um, so with Minyi uh, in uh, 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 the papers at the CDC and in the SAM Journal on Control and Optimization last year, there's uh, 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 our uh, analysis of the situation, which uh, which essentially for, again, U compact, uh, um, boundedness of the functions of all the functions that you've seen, uh, Lipschitz conditions on all functions, together with the existence of a unique continuous minimizer of the Hamiltonian, it's the same words, there exists a unique Nash equilibrium solution, now indexed by alpha ranging over the nodes of the network. Okay, uh, okay. and the feedback best response strategy, as I've just said in the last slide, now uh, 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 depends upon, again, crucially, only your local state and time and the solution to the whole works. So this is the, 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 uh, uh, the, the objection here could be that I've been um, promoting mean field game theory on the grounds that you replace 300,000 equations of 100,000 competitors in some market situation uh, uh, by six equations describing three states for the focal Planck equation and three states the Hamiltonian equation. So, so this enormous reduction of complexity, which is what makes it, is what makes it work, 
and I replace, and now I've gone to a situation of an uncountable number of those problems. So where's the advantage? Well, the point is that, uh, that the complexity here depends upon uh, the, the complexity of the graphon. Because the variety of, 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 of dynamics at the, at the nodes, all of which you've got to solve, depends upon how complicated the graphon is. And you'll see that in for simple graphons, in fact, you can solve this setup just as you could have solved, it, solved the mean field game equations before. Uh, so first we get the existence of uniqueness result, then uh, subject, so, so what comes next, uh, of course, is, um, is uh, the epsilon Nash result. So, so there's a graph convergence assumption, uh, uh, which, um, which uh, requires, uh, 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 which currently this is our best assumption or condition, uh, uh, which is that so that this is when you've got um, uh, mk, mk uh, is the uh, number of, of, of nodes, uh, the, that, um, that this uh, normalization of, the, uh, of the, the, the weight in the kth graph of the connection between the ith and the jth cluster, uh, uh, but it's different. Now there's a point, there's an issue here which I uh, need to address, which is that this it will be, uh, you take a midpoint on the interval corresponding to the, uh, uh, to the uh, chosen agent, and then you integrate the graphon function over the interval that corresponds to the jth, jth cluster. So there's, so you're integrating over this sort of wedge uh, in the, in the, uh, if you're, if we're integrating over all betas, you'd then be integrating looking out from your node over everybody. But this is just looking out from your node, just the part of the fiber in the graphon that corresponds to the uh, jth agent. Okay, so that interval, right? <clears throat> so then, um, so, okay. That's, that's it. This is somewhat stronger than just the graph limit convergence, right? So, yeah, this is an, this is an extra condition to make this it is, work. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. So, the, so, subject to that convergence, okay, so that in the, in the ith cluster, the agent, uh, so in the finite setup, the agent I will be using. Now, there's, a, there's a, 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 an additional point here when you're trying to control on large networks, which is that. When you go to the to applying the uh, applying your infinite project control in the mean field game setup, there's no pro problem about approximation. You're just the ith agent, and then you compute the the the, the, the infinite population solution. Just use it. The question when you come down from the infinite graph, and you <clears throat> is how you actually communicate between the infinite graph and your local graph. So there, uh, you look at the actual construction, uh, uh, use this uh, midpoint, use these midpoint intervals, and then you can get your, get your approximation. So then the, an the answer is that using the midpoint controls, now we've got a double limit. That, as you, uh, uh, that for sufficiently large populations and a, sufficiently la and a, 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 a graph sufficiently far along the sequence <laughs> for the convergence that you seem to take to, to be close enough, then you get your epsilon Nash property. Okay, and as I've emphasized, this is this is what allows you to apply, in principle, uh, uh, your uh, 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 infinite simple computed solutions in your finite setting. Okay. So the the the, the next <clears throat> so the next topic uh, is that we're interested in the critical nodes for graphon mean field game systems. So uh, assume a, let's assume a graph on mean field game system has Nash values. So let's assume that the problems are soluble. And let's assume that they're differentiable. Okay. Oh, by the way, the differentiability that, you, that we got earlier with respect to time and space of the Nash values was, it was a result of the application of the theory of partial differential equations that those solutions indeed had solutions. So of course, proving they have solutions involves proving, establishing that the differentials exist. So the, um, then alpha is a critical node to the GMFG system if the local Nash value stationarity conditions hold, namely if at your node, if you differentiate with respect to 
movement of the node, namely just taking its partial differential with respect to the node index, then you get zero, namely you get a, a locally a stationary value. Okay, you have a locally a stationary value. So alpha is a node index here. A node alpha is a node index, index in the limit, right? Yes. And now, so you to yes. some extent assume you have differentiable. So that is you you need the differentiability with respect to the index of the graphing, which is usually something we absolutely don't discuss and don't have in the graphing theory. So now you well, need I, a graph I'm, I'm on. I'm very if you said that because that's the whole research in progress. Last ten minutes of my talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that. Well, I mean, you get, you negotiated five minutes, which are almost over, but we really had a lot of questions. Do we want to give him, should we vote? Do we give him five more? Okay, so you get, you get now five and a half more minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, the, the, okay, so the, the, firstly, this illustrates this illustrates how the, the fact that you can solve these equations. Um, so in the classic, uh, this is work by uh, uh, Rinell and, and then later developments of it with, uh, with uh, Schwanko uh, in, the, in the audience. If you take the standard linear system or scalars, standard quadratic cost functions, okay? Uh, 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 and notice the, the, uh, the, the drift here does not involve for simplicity, the mean field, although often, very often we will have the individual states that the alpha node push around by the mean field for sure. Okay, <clears throat> and in fact, that 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 more than just the impact of all the mean fields. Here we've got the here we've got the global mean of the mean field in the sense that you take the means uh, of the measures uh, at the all the beta nodes. Uh, all infinity of them, then you weight them by the graph one, then you get the local impact Z alpha G, and that goes in the cost function. And this cost function where you're trying to track the mass behavior is a standard, is a standard mean field game uh, 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 um, uh, performance function. So now you, uh, you could, the, by solving, as I've advertised, the stochastic control problem for the individual agent uh, against the mean field which is here just represented by, by its mean, uh, uh, then and then applying the consistency condition that the resulting uh, uh, measure on the alpha agent is uh, uh, um, that you get is exactly the law that you assumed in the first place. Then uh, what you do that results in solving uh, the Ricard standard Riccati equation of linear quadratic control theory. Uh, here's your control depending upon your state the solution to the Riccati equation and an offset, which is driven by the, uh, in, the, by the mean, by the deterministic mass mean field coming in on your node like this. Okay, so now you can actually show calculations here. So this is the point that we want to get to, uh, <coughs> that, um, that if you take, for instance, two uh, the classic base cases, the edos renier graph, okay, in, so if there's if if people if the agents nodes are connected by Edish Renier, then uh, it turns out that the means of those weighted means that you've seen are stationary. The uh, 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 the controls will turn out to be stationary, and the actual uh, Nash value will turn out to be stationary. Here on the uniform attachment graph, again, this is to not only to show you. The, 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 the application of the uh, ideas here, but to show that you can actually solve these equations in the linear quadratic Gaussian case. Um, here, the only node that turns out to be stationary uh, uh, for, the, for the mean and then for the value is the root node. So here, of course, this is heavy with interpretation, namely that if you want to minimize your cost and you're playing in a, in a game where connectivity matters, which it does here, then put yourself at the root of a uniform attachment graph and you're gonna minimize your costs most. And that, and that uh, is illustrated by computations. Okay. So, um, and uh, so this is the proposition that in fact, uh, that in fact you also get that, that for this LQG situation, you can actually show that you've got stationarity uh, 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 um, at, the, at those, um, uh, uh, 
at the uh, that when you had those critical mean uh, mean field nodes, they were also critical uh, 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 here. So the um, now the in the remaining um, two point three minutes um, that the, uh, uh, the, the 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 here it is that. Uh, the issue is the indexing by real numbers, okay, that, and, and the measure preserving uh, bijection. Of course, there's no geometric significance to this, and so the, the differentiation is not meaningful. Uh, what's more, you can't just, you cannot map down to the, 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 the real interval. Um, the that, uh, open subsets of Euclidean space for any higher dimensions, so if you have a, uh, if, the, if you start with embedded uh, 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 graph models, you've got no hope of, mo of getting a, a homeomorphism, let alone a diffeomorphism, which is taken to the unit interval. So um, what we want to do is to embed our, our graphs, starting off by embedding the vertices. And to do that, um, that I came up with a scheme, which I call um, uh, uh, the texons, uh, which is an embedding of the nodes. And uh, and a uh, uh, proving that uh, that uh, these uh, are giving a well, it's sort of condition free of having limits to sequence of vertices in a box, so in your unit in dimensional unit box, so we can embed our vertex sets uh, without going through the uh, details here. Of course, um, that we have a that actually essentially paralleling the par paralleling the proof scheme for the compactness. Of graphon spaces in uh, the, the Lavash monograph, um, one can show it, <clears throat> with a modification of it the existence of, of limit measures for the vertex sequences. And if those measures have densities, then you've got a set on which you can support your differentiation. And then you can play the same game uh, on the product space with the edges planted in it. And again, using this uh, a modification, sorry, this is just look like a mass of words here, uh, using a modification, again, of the uh, compactness proof, and the compactness proof, you can then actually get measures which govern the graph limits. So, uh, and they're sitting in space, we've got a differentiation, so then we have a framework, then we have a framework for actually differentiating in a meaningful way, meaningful way, uh, in meaningful way, uh, 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 actually, of course, solving the GMFG equations didn't require such a differentiation. But now we have these solutions uh, and it, embedded, we can in our, uh, 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 with a straight face, differentiate with respect to no position. That's work in progress. Okay, so I think we Thank you may have much. used. Okay, thank you very much. I think we should push questions to the lunch break or tea. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.